Hi, Team All Systems Go here, and we're back for the replay season. Today we'll share seven mission speculations and four robot tips. I'll start with the mission that we call the Seesaw. It moves back and forth like a seesaw, and when you pull this part out, you can balance it, and that's how we think you can score points. Alternatively, you can launch minifigures with it. This is the mission that we call the basketball hoop. It is roughly 10 inches tall and has a sliding mechanism attached to the pool. It also has two walks so that the hoop doesn't go down after you bring it up. Our guess is that you get some points when, it, when you put it halfway up, and more points when it's all the way up. However, if our model is correct, it can come off completely and you can lose all your points, which is just part of the challenge. We call this mission the treadmill. We think when a robot or an attachment drives onto the mission and spins these rollers, the pointer will move around the dial. Maybe the further the pointer moves, the higher the score. This mission sits over a hopscotch game that's printed on the map. We think that you have to lift off this piece and bring it back to home without this part falling over. This is what we call the slide. We think that your robot has to push this minifigure down the slide, then lift this minifigure up and push it down too. Also, maybe for bonus points, we can bring them both back to home. Next mission. We call this mission the rowing machine. We think that if you pull this tire to lift the other two and have these rays at the end of the match, they'll score the points. We're going with the common thought that this is a high bar mission. So we've decided to show you what it would look like for a robot to hang from it which leads us to robot tip number one. You may want to think about a rack and pinion design for your robot, like this one. Keep in mind that this is our city shaper robot, and this design might not work as well for replay. You can also have a rack and pinion attachment, which mounts onto your robot versus built-in. Either way, the linear motion will help with these types of missions. Next, we'll talk about color sensors. There are a lot of lines on this table, and if you plan to line follow, Make sure to have two color sensors placed at the front of your robot and one to two studs off the ground for best performance. For our team, we use color sensors when we have to, but they're not our first choice. Instead, we prefer physical squaring like these forks, ball following, and our gyro sensor. Finally, in between missions, it's helpful to back your robot into a wall and reset the gyro sensor. This is what's called wall squaring, and it helps with reliability. If you're using an educator-style robot versus this box style, you'll need to add this bumper at the back because you'll need it for wall square. This bumper will also help you align with the wall in the launch area, and that's better than using the grid. I went through these tips quickly to give you a starting point for your own research. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you next time!